Hello, I'm Ollie Pyle, I'm a landscape painter and today I want to show you some of the different brush strokes that I use in my paintings. Uh, brush strokes are a very individual thing and how you hold the brush and how you use it very much defines your style. Think of it almost like handwriting. Um, my brush strokes and the, and the way that I use the brush will be completely different to yours. And in fact, many artists use all manner of different things to make marks on the paper. And it could be a sponge, it could be a broken twig, it could be the side of a card. All these things have a lot of use. And I, I, I love watching artists do that because it's incredibly creative and it creates some wonderful effects. I'm pretty old school. I stick with my brush. I'm going to show you some basic strokes with a few little quick exercises and let's see how we get on with those. Okay, brush control. Take your number 10 brush. I'm using my uh, Aquafine number 10 here. And just look at the end of the brush. This is, this is a round brush. You can get flat ones and, and all manner of different shapes, to be honest. But I like using round brushes. They give me a lot of versatility. And there's two main parts that you use. There's the tip, and then there's this bit here called the belly. And I will show you how you can get different strokes using different parts of the brush. Your main stroke that allows you to have a whole range of different shapes, or create a whole range of different shapes, I should say, on the paper, is painting with the tip of your brush. I like to put my brush in the water, take out most of it with a, with a cloth or a piece of kitchen paper, and then go into the colour, make sure you've got a nicely loaded brush, and with a number 10 size like this, you can put large strokes down by pressing your brush into the paper. And that allows you to cover large areas quite quickly. But if you need to paint around something, then that's no problem. Your brush, if it's a decent brush, and these, these Aquafine brushes are really good, will come to a point and enable you to make fine adjustments. So let's assume that I'm painting a hill around some buildings here, just for argument's sake. And with one brush I've gone from wide strokes down to small strokes. As you're painting, I think the Chinese do this, who are master calligraphers with their brush, is they roll the brush slightly in their fingers and it helps it to come to a nice point. So you're ready to go again with a brush that's not all splayed out. Wide brush strokes, and I'm rolling it still in my fingers just to get, encourage that point to come back if I need it. Ease the pressure, and you've got fine strokes as well. Now that's your traditional brush stroke, but another important brush stroke to have in your armoury where you get a little bit more energetic with the brush is, is a broken brush stroke. And this is perfect for describing um, rock faces, uh, broken areas of, of, of grass or tree bark, things like that, where you need a bit of texture. And hedges as well is really good for hedges. And you're using not just the tip, but the belly of the brush as well. And you, you're really just making random marks it sounds a bit scrubby because it is and and you're using the texture on the paper and you want to allow your brush to just go in fairly hit and miss directions let's let's assume i'm making a hedge here and by painting like that and using the tip the belly of the brush as well allows you to make a lovely broken wash and you get a random shape that has Quite a lot of interest often looks a little more intriguing than if I sat sat here and just painted a nice hedge like this with the tip of my brush. Doesn't look so good, does it? Now, very similar to this broken brush stroke um, is a stroke that I use in an awful lot of my paintings, and it's brilliant for suggesting texture. And it's it's called dry brushing, but it's it's not actually as it seems. You do need a reasonable amount of paint in your brush, and the key is moving your brush very, very quickly across the paper and allowing the texture of the paper to 
define the brush stroke. Now to do that, I hold the brush completely differently. I hold it flat like this, and I, I, I want just the belly of the brush to skim across the paper. And it might look quite easy, but believe me, it isn't as easy as it looks. What I'm doing is I'm just allowing the brush to kiss the surface of the paper. It's got plenty of paint in it, and that's where the whole dry brush idea becomes a little bit confusing. And I'm quite happy for it to be, in some parts, a little bit fuller and a, a little bit broken, because that variety looks good. But this is great if you're painting fields. You can also do it another way by pushing your brush down into the paper at the beginning and pulling it through like that. That works well for people. I prefer I prefer this method. It just seems to work for me. And you seem to get nice consistent results. I say consistent results. Consistently good passages of dry brushing, but they're always random. You can't quite predict where where it's going to hit, where it isn't going to hit, but it creates a lovely textured feel to your painting. Now I've got my rigger brush here, Aquafine Rigger number two, and you can see it's it's a nice fine brush. It's 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 perfect for doing detailed work, um, railings, fence posts, boat masts, that type of thing. It's great for that. Um, but just using the tip of your rigger like this for fine lines is perhaps limiting what it's capable of. It's a fantastic brush for doing winter trees because this length of, of hair has got a lot of spring in it. And if you're using some nice textured paper, particularly rough surface paper, you can get some wonderful effects with it. And, and again, you've got to allow the brush and you've got to allow the watercolour to sort of take its own um, or make its own decisions. So I'm going to push that nice long tip to the brush into the paper and ease up the pressure. And can, can you see that, that lovely broken edge? It's looking exactly like a winter tree would. The bristles are sort of bouncing around on the paper, and I can respond to where little bits are, are, are sticking out of the tree and think, okay, well that's that's where a branch would be growing. It's perfect. Get used to using it like this on its side. It's, it's, you can get some fantastic results with it, and I use it all the time for my winter trees. I'm going to have to stop. I could end up doing this all day. I've got my number six brush now, and um, I'm just going to show you a little technique uh, that has an awful lot of application um, across your paintings. And watercolorists I know use this technique in all manner of different ways. And it becomes a little bit like your handwriting because you see it all cropping up in their paintings. And it's a technique of varying the pressure on the brush. I use it a lot for ripples in water. It's my it's my go-to ripple stroke. So what I'll do is I'll start off quite light and then I'll press the brush into the paper and lift out. And I can do a whole load of those and I'm starting to build up the rippled surface to water. Looks easy, but takes a bit of practice, believe me. But have a go at it because it's a good way of learning how to control your brush. Okay, so I hope that helps. Keep practicing with your brushes. Keep practicing the mark making. And as you develop more skills, use different techniques. Use other pieces of equipment to make marks. That's fine. But learn how to use the brush. Brush control is one of the foundational skills of good watercolour painting. So keep doodling, have fun, and I'll see you next time.